Apparently, mountain lions are turning these invasive donkeys into meow mix, and it's actually a good thing. Okay, there's a lot to digest here, so let's just start with the basics. You've probably heard the term invasive species, but what is it exactly? It includes plants and animals in an environment where it's not native and causes ecological, environmental, or economic harm. And amid the arid land of sagebrush and Joshua trees, thousands of feral donkeys roam Death Valley National Park. Now, if you're like me, you're probably still stuck on what the heck are wild donkeys doing out west? Let's go back in time to the 1800s. Before mass-produced vehicles, burrows were used by miners during the gold rush. But when dreams of striking it rich went bust, the miners took off, leaving behind ghost towns and abandoned burrows. But did they wallow in despair? No, the donkeys sought comfort in each other. With no natural predators keeping them in check, the population exploded and they began to wreak havoc on nearby habitats by gobbling up vegetation and digging up the landscape. All of this landed them on the National Park Service's list, deeming the Death Valley donkeys as invasive. However, their impact on the ecosystem has become a subject of scientific debate. Ultimately, if you went out, if you didn't know if donkeys were native or not, would you be able to tell from their actual impacts? That's Dr. Eric Ludgren. And a lot of his work centers around the burrows in Death Valley National Park. So ecologists these days are starting to rethink these paradigms and describe the impacts of organisms more in terms of their relationship to other organisms. For him, the line between invasive and non-invasive is a bit blurred. Are the donkeys really an invasive species? This term invasive can lead to decisions to do things without any attention to the, the side effects. The federal government's go-to burrow solution has been to remove the animals. But according to Lundgren, that has some unintended consequences. There's a, a, a conservation refuge right next to Death Valley called Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. It's this wetland complex in the desert that has all these unique endemic fish populations that only occur there. And there are wild donkeys. The invaders were charged with disturbing the wetlands, promptly removed, and the area was fenced off. Once the donkeys disappeared, these wetlands filled in with vegetation. A lot of the water became anaerobic and the, this area lost nearly half of those fish populations. They went, they went extinct, which is crazy. So the thing that donkeys do that people find annoying, you know, the stomping and the digging up vegetation was actually good in this case. The wild donkeys are having impacts just like any other large mammal would. What Lundgren is implying is that the burrows could be filling a role left empty by past extinctions. So North America had several ground sloths and camels and tapirs and many big, big predators. These animals went extinct in North America about 12,000 years ago, which is around the time humans arrived on scene, leaving behind a giant donkey-sized hole. These ancient relationships are being um, reborn in these new ecosystems. At this point, you might be thinking, isn't part of the reason why donkeys have become this massive problem because they don't have any natural predators to keep their numbers in check, allowing their population to grow out of control? It was very surprising and reassuring that, that mountain lions actually were hunting them. Well, it was thought they don't have any natural predators until Dr. Lundgren snapped these trail cam images of the Death Valley donkeys becoming cat food Capturing one on a camera is very rare. Not only have the donkeys taken the place of ancient horse-like animals from 12,000 years ago, the cougars have stepped into the role of ancient predators. The presence of mountain lions does two things. One, naturally reduce the donkey population, and two, alter the behavior of surviving donkeys. The impacts of the wild burrows on these ecosystems, on these habitats, and yes, they can be really remarkable, really strong, but when the mountain lions are present, these impacts are significantly reduced. But Lundgren fears if the donkey removals continues, the mountain lions could find something else to munch on. If they are going to remove wild horses and wild donkeys from a landscape, there very well will be inadvertent consequences as those mountain lions then start to hunt other animals like bighorn sheep, which are of conservation concern in many places. He hopes instead of labeling the donkeys as inherently bad, People will look at the big picture and the ancient relationships forged in this new environment. 
These animals are actually restoring lost processes that were once ubiquitous across the Earth prior to prehistoric extinctions.